So uh, this paper, Food Insecurity, Gender, and International Migration, uh, is with uh, my dissertation advisor, uh, Maria Floro, uh, at American University. And for the sake of bureaucracy, I have to say that the views expressed by me today do not reflect ec the Economic Research Service of the USDA or the United States government at all. Now that we're past that. Okay, so the takeaway message of this paper is that I find that food insecurity is an important determinant of migration behavior for both migration intentions and migration decisions. I find that food, uh, migration intentions increases monotonically with the severity of food insecurity. So the more food insecure you are, the more likely you are to attend, uh, intend to migrate. I find that the as association between food insecurity and migration intentions is larger than for any other covariate used in the model, and this includes household income, social networks, or education, which are typically the biggest influences on migration intentions. And I find that migration decisions also decreases with the severity of food insecurity. Uh, last, I find that the relationships vary, oh God, okay. This, this rela these relationships vary significantly with uh, gender as well, and I attribute these to uh, socially prescribed gender norms and uh, differential access to resources and uh, employment opportunities. Um, and I conclude that not accounting for these relationships may yield biased findings and may yield unreliable policy prescriptions. So to tell you why these results are important, uh, migration is obviously an increasingly important strategy in the developing world, uh, but there's a notable lack of research on the relationship between food insecurity and migration. Uh, further, there seems to be an institutional disconnect between uh, migration and food security development agendas, where each has their own international agency, each has their own international gathering and their own body of scholarly research, but often disregard each other completely or uh, treat, e treat each other tangentially. Uh, one of these reasons uh, for this gap in the literature was there was previously lacking a common measure of individual level food insecurity that could be applied around the world. Uh, to address this, FAO instituted the Voices of the Hungry Project and developed the Phi scale, or the Food Insecurity Experience Scale, and in 2014 implemented into the Gallup World Poll uh, over, an, over 150 countries. Um, further, while some research has uh, examined the overall trends of migration by gender, a uh, few have modeled explicitly uh, the differences in uh, international determinants uh, or migration determinants between men and women, uh, despite the fact that the global share of international migrants are now increasingly women, uh, where the common assumption in the economics literature is usually that the costs and potential returns to international migration are gender neutral, so the same between men and women, and more and more we're learning this is not true. So the objectives of this paper was to examine food insecurity as a determinant of migration behavior, uh, both migration intentions and the migration decisions uh, from the potential movers in developing countries. Uh, we first develop a theoretical framework uh, to demonstrate this relationship from a gendered perspective and then we empirically examine the set of hypotheses derived from the theoretical framework. So hypothesis one is that we expected to find food insecurity to have a positive relationship uh, with migration intentions, but we expected an ambiguous relationship between food insecurity and migration decisions. Uh, for example, you, being food insecure may, want you, may lead you to want to uh, smooth your consumption by using migration, but you might not be able to afford it since you can't afford food. Uh, hypothesis two is that uh, we expect that the magnitude of these relationships to increase with the severity of food insecurity and given socially described gender norms and unequal gender relations in developing countries that we expected these relationships to differ by gender. Okay, so the contribution of the paper. Uh, we first provide a better understanding of the gendered relationship between uh, international migration and food insecurity through our theoretical framework. Uh, we provide empirical evidence for the first time on this, this relationship uh, um, for individuals among 90 developing countries, and we empirically demonstrate that this relationship is gender specific. So in the paper, I derive each one of these terms, but uh, for time, we'll just jump right in. Um, so we model differently the uh, individual's migration intention versus the individual's uh, migration decision. So starting here, the probability of a migration intention from country K to country J is just the probability that their expected utility in their destination is greater than the utility of staying where they are, given uh, that they have enough resources A to meet the migration cost threshold gamma C. And therefore, the probability of not migrating, of staying, is the probability that they cannot afford to migrate, or if they can, that their expected utility of, is in the destination country is lower than their utility of staying where they are. 
where they are, so let's stay. Um, the gender effect on the migration intentions is ambiguous. So on the one hand, uh, higher psychic costs and fewer resources can constrain women from considering migration. But on the other hand, a uh, higher probability of employment in certain female labor intensive sectors in destination countries uh, can increase their intentions to migrate. Uh, for example, there's recently an, uh, an increase in the demand for care industry migrants who are typically female. Uh, in the second stage, we model the migration decision, but we follow the new economic labor migration uh, literature, and we model the migration decision as a function of the household, so the individual and the household members are maximizing the joint utility function for the benefit of the entire family. So this is, or, uh, this is displayed by N here, and so the first component of N is the individual's expected utility in the destination minus the utility of staying where they are, and the second component here is the household's utility having sent a migrant minus the household's utility of not sending a migrant. Uh, w here, uh, WI is the weight for the individual, uh, individual migrant's um, intention, and WH is the weight of the uh, rest of the household, at which sum to one. So the probability of a migration taking place, migration decision, is that N is positive, uh, given that the household has re enough resources A to cover the migration cost threshold. Um, so gender influences the, uh, the household decision uh, in three ways. So the psychic costs of migration endured by the uh, other household members um, is also is influenced by gender. So if the intending member is a uh, migrant is female, uh, her migration may violate certain gender norms or social expectations, which could increase uh, social costs in the household, which could increase the overall migration costs. Uh, the bargaining position of the prospective migrant is migrant is gender uh, influenced by gender. Uh, if the female uh, members are likely to have lower bargaining uh, power in the household, then their weight, the WI, will go to, towards zero, and the weight for the household will go towards one. So the closer you are to one, the more bar bargaining power you have in this migration decision. And the probability of employment in destination countries, and therefore the expected remittances, is also so data for the paper come from the 2014 to 15 waves of the Gallup World Poll, which is an annual survey of, of adults in over 150 countries. We include only low-income and middle-income countries and restrict the ages to 1864. Uh, our dependent variable is the one you just saw, actually, for migration intentions. Uh, ideally, if you had the opportunity, would you like to move to permanently to another country in the next 12 months? And the migration decision uh, variable is have you done uh, any preparation for this move, for example, have you applied to residency or visa? So we assume implicitly that if the individual has purchased an airline ticket or applied for a visa successfully, that the household has collectively decided to send that migrant. Um, food and security information comes from the FAO's food and security scale, which is a series of eight questions uh, about the individual's um, experiences in meeting their basic food needs in the past year. So, uh, we use item response theory uh, to assess and combine individual responses to the survey. Uh, and a Roche scale is then estimated for each country. Uh, and each country scale is then normalized to a global reference scale. And this, uh, uh, this, uh, <laughs> this makes that the severity of food insecurity uh, equivalent across different countries, right? So the food security in Ghana is, after this procedure is now the same as the food security in uh, Mexico which is a pretty big innovation for this data. Uh, and then, so how I code the person's uh, food, food insecurity. So an individual can be uh, food secure, uh, mildly food insecure, moderately food insecure, or severely food insecure, depending on how many items of the survey they affirm. So we model different, uh, separately migration intentions, and separately we model migration decisions. So starting with migration intentions, we use a hierarchical linear model, which controls for the clustering of standard errors, the individual, the region, and the country level. Uh, X here is the demographic characteristics and, and socioeconomic characteristics. F is a function of the individual's ordinal food security status, W. Um, and X is uh, a vector of country level characteristics, uh, GDP, unemployment, for example. For the migration decision, uh, we use a hierarchical binary choice for the sample selection. So in our data, we only observe uh, the migration decision data for those who uh, 
selected one or said they had a migration intention. So for example, Y here is the migration decision and M is the migration intention. So we only observe Y if M equals one. So to control for the sample selection, we have to use the sample selection model. Uh, so here's some uh, example results. We control, obviously, a lot more covariates to this, but so hypothesis one is that we expected a positive relationship. As, let me start so this table is for migration intentions. Uh, hypothesis one was that we expected to see a positive significant relationship between food insecurity and migration intentions, and we see this is the case. Hypothesis two is we expected migration intentions to increase with the severity of food insecurity, and we see that the more food insecure you are, the more likely you are to intend to migrate. Uh, hypothesis three is that we expected a gender differences in migra migration intentions, and we see that women intend to migrate 3.8 percentage points less than men. In columns two and three, we decompose a sample by gender, so female uh, individuals in column two and male individuals in column three. We see that for each uh, level of food insecurity, the coefficients are slightly larger uh, for men. Um, and interestingly, given the different care responsibilities for women in developing countries, uh, even the most mildest level of food insecurity acts as a driver of potential migration. Uh, and some other determinants, so we find that those living in rural areas intend to migrate more or less, sorry, and that those that live in urban areas intend to migrate more uh, compared to those that live in small towns or villages. Uh, the more educated intend to migrate more, those who are married intend to migrate less than those who are not. Uh, those who are socially connected in their country of origin intend to migrate less. And those that are more socially connected outside of their country of origin and tend to migrate more, which corresponds to the previous literature in diasporas and migration. So for the migration decisions, uh, this is the sample selection model. So uh, the top panel is the outcome uh, equation, which is migration decisions. And then the bottom panel is the selection equation, which is migration intention. So for the first hypothesis, we see that mig uh, food insecurity is, uh, significantly decreases the probability of making a migration decision. Uh, the more food insecure you are, the, more, the less likely you are to decide to migrate. Um, we see that gender plays no significant role in the migration decision, although the gender effect could be captured by other covariates in the model. When we, looked at, when we look at decomposed sample by gender, we see that the coefficients are slightly larger for women uh, now. And we see that the mild food insecurity category no longer uh, acts as a is not, no longer correlated with a migration decision. So uh, we find that individuals in rural areas intend to migrate more, but this is gen, uh, uh, almost completely being driven by women in developing countries. And in the selection equation, we again find that uh, migration intentions increases monotonically with food insecurity. So to conclude, uh, I find a significant relationship between food insecurity and migration behavior. Uh, this implies that this vast literature uh, the determinants of migration may regularly be ignoring an important component of migration decision-making process. I find that uh, significant gender heterogeneity, so this implies that gender-related migration policies are crucial, and that blanket approaches to development assistance may not be effective. And the results also imply a crucial need for increased coordination between the international food security and migration policy agendas.